So many years I wondered what I'd do if I ever saw him again. And then I did. In a photo, in a briefing room. And I was being sent to meet him with a gun. When this is all done, Steve, I'll suffer for my actions. I'm under no illusions of a happy ending. Shot fired! What's he saying? He whispered something to you. What did he say? I'm not sure what he meant. My job is to find any and all evidence. And what was found in the case? A large number of banknotes. How did Detective Sergeant Arnott react? He didn't bat an eye. I don't think we should close the investigation into Danny Walter's background. I'd like to keep digging. There's evidence of prolonged torture. The cause of death isn't clear. Well, cutting his head off can't have helped. This photograph shows Danny Waldron as a teenager. And this man's a young Ronan Murphy, the suspect shot by Danny Waldron during Operation Dams. Well, they knew each other. And this person bears a strong resemblance to Linus Murphy's severed head. Danny knew him too. No prior information of the operation to move Tommy Hunter. I had no prior knowledge, no prior knowledge at all. Kate knows about me and, and Jackie and Danny. I've got to come clean to AC-12. The longer I leave it, the worse it looks. It is with deep regret that I inform you all of the death of PC Rod Kennedy. Rod's body was found hanged at an industrial unit. We need to talk. You are now declaring that PC Rod Kennedy killed Sergeant Daniel Walden. Yes, sir. Rod killed Danny. Look, I'm sorry about this. It's just that we've got no one else to talk to right now. It's fine. Not mate, I, I don't think I can keep going into the station. All the stuff that's going on behind our backs, all the stuff that's going on to our faces. Yeah, well, Rob was a good bloke, wasn't he? You know, people can't get their heads around it. Yeah, I can see why. Look, Jacket, don't do this to yourself. Well, my hands were on that gun and I felt Rod force the trigger. He killed Danny. You know, we was right to stick together, you know, when he was here, but now he's gone. We've got to move on. Oh, come here. Superintendent Hastings. Hi, sorry to bother you, sir. I just followed Jackie Brickford to a meeting with Harry Baines. You seem pretty bloody shifty to me. Dot, just so you know, I've authorised Kate to adopt direct surveillance on Harry Baines. Nice one, Gaffer. Yeah, and I want Stephen on it too. Absolutely. Steve, get yourself over to South Ferry when Harry Baines comes on shift. Be visible. Sir. Andrew. Yes, Anna. IC 12. What do you want? An interview you gave at IC 12, you informed us that Harry Baines had a good working relationship with Danny Waldron. Uh, yeah. So? Harry never made any complaints about Danny. If anything, the opposite. How so, Mum? I was due to rotate Harry from Danny's squad, but Harry said that he respected Danny's professionalism and wanted to ride on more jobs with him. Really? When did he say this? 
couple of days before the Abbots lane up. You mean a couple of days before the op that got Danny killed? I was all set to disband Danny's team after the shooting of Roman and Murphy. And there is no way you're going to pin some blame on me just because you're struggling to find a scapegoat. Thank you, Mom. You've been very helpful. DC Fleming, put me through to telecommunications, please. Telecom. DC Fleming, I need an identification on the last number dialed from a payphone on the corner of Calman Road and Turner Road. Stand by. The number you have called is not recognised. Please check the number. The number you have called is not Uh, Kate reports Baines attempted to make a call to this number. It relates to an unregistered pay-as-you-go mobile. Now, the call couldn't be connected because either the phone or the SIM card was out of service. I've got my neat liaison with the mobile network provider to see what information we can get about the number. Great. Tell Kate I want to run Harry Baines around the clock. Yeah, we'll do that. But the text came through to my own phone, so I thought... Yeah, well, we had to get a message to you urgently, and you weren't answering. You're being watched by SU-12. I didn't see anyone. What did the text say? Sit tight, act normal. So as this acting normal, dickhead? All right? All right. Look. For my two pennies, I think we're flogging a dead horse with Baines and Brentford. Rod Kennedy killed Danny Waldron. Couldn't handle the girl, he topped himself. Maybe it wasn't suicide. We ought to request a second post-mortem on Rod Kennedy's body. The first one was only looking for cause of death. We should get a home office pathologist looking for evidence of crime. Sure. Yeah, leave that with me. Cheers. Look, do you like chilli? The, the food, not the country. <laughs> I've got a pot. On the simmer. You've probably eaten. No, I haven't, actually. Oh. Yeah? <laughs> Not too far, are you? No, I'll cope. You know, if you go to the trouble of making a pot, you might as well make it last a few days, you know. One night can have it with rice, one night baked potato, and <laughs> <laughs> it's rock and roll, mate. Well, I'm not complaining. By the time I knock off, the only thing that's open is a dodgy kebab. Well, that's undercover, isn't it? Stupid hours. Well, Mark works in IT. He did a lot from home, which was great for childcare. Just not so great for us. You still see the kid, though? Yeah. Sorry, I shouldn't poke my nose in. No, it's fine. It was the right decision, you know, give him security and stability. Just not such a great decision for me, to be honest. See, me and my missus, we never got round to having kids. Was she a copper too? Forensics. I don't see much of her now. No? Yeah, I was on the piss most nights. Couldn't pass a bookies. Final straw was we'd put down half on a fortnight in Mallorca. Oh, don't tell me. Yeah, five to one. Dead cert. I couldn't go home to face the music, so... Took out a loan. Put a grand down on the last race of the day, try and win it all back. Barrel laughs me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah have your bowl. Cheers. Hey, 
the second zero if you fancy. Any more and I won't get off your sofa. <laughs> I've got something for you, Sarge. On that photo, found at Danny's. Yeah, sure. It's from a boy's home called Sandsview. Danny Waldron's mum died when he was 11 and he moved up north to live with his dad and his stepmom, but that didn't work out and he got taken into care. Danny was a resident at Sandsview from the age of 13 until he was 17. I'll keep going through the file. There's no link between Danny Waldron and Ronan Murphy while Danny was a police officer. The only link must be this boy's home. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't get hold of any records for that period. One council department told me they were lost in a fire. Another department told me they went missing during an office move. Well, you think they were lost on purpose? Who knows? The lads were chucked out at 17 and pretty much left to fend for themselves with no follow-up. However, I've cross-checked with individuals known to the criminal justice system and I've got a name for you. Same age as Danny, so chances are they were there at the same time. Good work. Show your photograph, that's all right. That's a photocopy of an original image, believed to be approximately 15 to 20 years old. Do you recognize the image? Yeah. Do you recall the name of this location? Yes. Mr. Nash, you're not in any trouble. How'd you find out my name? I'm not gonna lie. You committed a number of minor offenses. Look, I was just a kid back then. I put my life back together now. But the convictions are spent. It was only that your record cross checked with an inquiry I'm involved with. An inquiry into Sandsview? Connected to Sandsview. Do you recognise this individual? Yes, Danny. Danny Waldron? Yeah. Do you recognise this individual? Yes. What do you remember about that person? He took us for football on a Tuesday afternoon. He was one of the staff? No, he just took us for footy. What else do you recall about him? You've been a big help, Joe. Is it okay if I ask you about one more person? This man here. Him. Who is he? Mr. Murphy was a caretaker. The other man, football coach. Was his name Murphy too? It might have been. There was a pair. A pair? The old one, the caretaker, he had the keys. For the dormitories, changing rooms, the basement. But him, the younger one. He was in on it, too. With the others. What are this? Just not in the photo. Visitors. We got told they were very important people and we had to do exactly what they said. Do you ever get the names of any of these people? No. No, we never got any names. And even if we did, it was just... Mr Smith. What happened with these visitors? Well, sometimes they'd... They'd come to their home and we'd be told it was like a private interview. Mr Smith can be a big help to you when you move on, sort of thing, you know? And then you go to a room with Mr Smith. Or a few of you would. What if you were them? And the abuse always took place within Sandsview. No, not always. There was um, 
Sometimes there'd be a car or a minibus and they'd take us to, uh, to a hotel or a guest house or some big... some big private home, you know? But the parties... The parties, they were the worst. Parties? You know, there'd be a few of them, these, these VIPs. And we'd be farmed out. Do you recall any details in terms of names, addresses, or the people who drove you to and from this This parties? was a long time ago, all right, mate? And I wish I could remember that information and forget about the rest, but it's the opposite. I know this is hard, Joe. Is there anything you can tell me about these individuals that might help identify them? Yeah, there's one of them. Stands out. It's a, it's a big, f big fat whale of a fella. He always wore a suit, and when he took the suit jacket off, he always had these 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 sweat patches, and he, he stank of it. And when I got told he'd asked for me again, I'd I'd throw up, you know, I'd, I'd be sick. He's Danny, the one. The one? Yeah. He's got people listening to us at last. Yeah. Yeah, he is. Yet on the second PM. What second PM? Doc said he was organising a second post mortem on Lord Kennedy. First I've heard of it. Leave it with me. Okay, I'll head back to South Ferry. Francis, that was your rep. AC12 on you in for interview straight away. She doesn't know anything. She never believed us, not from me. Jackie. She went in the room when Danny was shot. But he whispered something to her as he was dying. Yeah. And if you managed to tell her the truth, do you think she would have kept quiet this whole time? No. But trust me, she don't know anything. Yeah? All right, mate. Continued to search records relating to Sam's view. Our witness Joseph Nash claims a number of his abusers were VIPs, all of whom used the same alias, Mr. Smith. Hence, Nash wasn't able to give us any names. But he did claim one of these abusers was extremely obese. A sports day at Sam's view. Who is he? Dale Roach. He was leader of the city council during the period Danny Waldron and Joe Nash were residents at Sam's view. Is this the man, Joe? Yeah, that's him. Thank you. Now, it would help if you would come at my department and look through some images of other individuals or so. <sighs> Joe, I came from a loving family. I had a nice childhood and I can't begin to imagine what yours must have been like. 20 years. It's took you to come here. I want to help. 20 years? I've had that monster in my head. The sounds you made, the smell of him. 
and the things that he did towards us stands for you. No copper ever gave a toss. Are you saying offences committed at Sandsview will report to police no action was taken? We told teachers, we told social workers, and yeah, we told coppers. And then we learned not to. Danny Waldron's dead, Joe. He was killed because he was going after the people who did this to you. Danny's mission is now my mission. And I promise you, I will get these bastards. Three years at least. Any family? No family, no visitors. Mr. Roach. Mr. Roach. Can you hear me? He doesn't understand much. He can't talk. What's wrong with him? Massive stroke. Sorry, do you need me to stay? No, thank you. Call if you need me. Mr. Oates, you'll recognise the name Sandsview Boys Home. Mr. Roach. I'm Detective Sergeant Steve Arnold. I'm investigating claims relating to Sandsview. Do you understand me? I know what you did to those boys. Danny Wardron recognised Ronan Murphy as an occasional sports volunteer at Sandsview Boys Home. Somehow, from Ronan, he was able to track down Linus Murphy. Now, Linus was the caretaker at Sandsview and used his position to include Ronan, his nephew, in his activities. Now, a witness has given us another name. Dale Roach. Counselor Dale Roach. Unfortunately, Roach isn't fit to stand trial. I think Danny Waldron purposely created a trail of evidence that led us to connect him to Linus Murphy's murder. And now we're on the trail of the other abusers. There's only one thing we're interested in here, son, and one thing only. And that's bent coppers. Boys make complaints, some allegedly to police officers. Thank you, Steve.
something wrong? You didn't come back to the station. By the time I finished with AC12, my shift was over. So what's going on? They just wanted to go over the details of the day Danny was killed. Times, places. You know what they're like, fishing for inconsistencies. Anything they can pounce on. And did they? Did they what? Pounce. We shouldn't talk about this. What did you tell them, Kate? We can't have this conversation, you should leave. I need to know. You keep asking me to leave you alone. Congratulations, you're on your own. What do they know, Kate? You should go. What do they know? They're on to the barrier. What about us? They know Harry stopped McAndrew from disbanding Danny's squad. What? Well, I never knew anything about that. And they know about the phone calls. What? What phone calls? Yeah, right. What phone calls? Bye, Jackie. What phone calls, Kate? They've got Harry making calls from a phone box to an unregistered pay-to-go number. They know it must be a phone you're using covertly. You two are in collusion and develop a new strategy using untraceable telephone calls. It's not me he's been calling. What's up, then? Who have you been calling? What? AC12 know you've been making dodgy calls. They think I'm in on it. All this time we trusted you. It was just the three of us. Now Rod's dead and that still isn't the end of it. Jackie, what? Who have you been making those calls to? Why aren't you telling me? I haven't been making any calls, all right? It's just me and you, and as long as we stick together, then... Jackie, I've been telling you the truth. Yeah, I'm sorry, I know it's late. I need to go in and see AC12. And I'm gonna need a solicitor. Stand away from the door. Ms. Denton, you remain under oath. Thank you, my lady. Ms. Denton, in your examination in chief by your own counsel, you made a number of references to an undercover operation conducted by Detective Sergeant Arnott of Anti-Corruption Unit 12. Yes, I did. Did any of these operations involve Detective Sergeant Arnott being present at your home? Some did. You were alone with Detective Sergeant Arnott? Sometimes. And on all these occasions, there were no other police officers in the vicinity? There was a constable stationed outside the house. But where outside? On the doorstep. And where did sexual relations take place? In the bedroom. And how was the bedroom accessed? Via the stairs. And how far do the stairs lie from the front door? I don't know, three or four metres from the front door. From the plans of your home obtained by the prosecution, the distance is... 2.7 metres. If you say so. I don't say so. It's a fact. And if I'm inaccurate, I'll be corrected. There are written statements by all the officers stationed outside the door in early October, and not one recalls hearing you and Detective Sergeant Arnott go upstairs together. Well, that doesn't surprise me. 
it doesn't surprise you that trained police officers on guard duty in a high state of vigilance don't hear the two of you go upstairs for sex when he or she is less than three meters away. We were discreet. Hmm. You've told the jury that this intimacy with Detective Sergeant Arnott won your trust, and therefore you permitted him unsupervised access to your home. There were times when I was napping or in the bath or the shower and he was free to roam the premises. I trusted him completely. And you've alleged that on one of these occasions, Detective Sergeant Arnott planted a sum of money in your late mother's overnight case. Did you witness Detective Sergeant Arnott bringing the £50,000 into your home? No. Nope. Did you ever witness Detective Sergeant Arnott having access to tens of thousands of pounds in cash? He'd hardly do it openly. Corrupt officers have access to criminal contacts. Please answer the question you've been asked. Did you ever witness Detective Sergeant Arnott with such an enormous sum of cash? I don't know how Steve Arnott got hold of the money and then got it into my house. Yeah, Miss Denton, you've answered. And I'm still answering. If I'm inaccurate, I'll be corrected. Steve Arnott had my complete trust and the trust of the officers on guard duty. He could easily have picked his moment to plant the money and I firmly believe that that is the best explanation for how it came to be there because I had never seen that money before. Were you aware that you were under investigation by Anti-Corruption Unit 12? Yes, I was. And were you cooperating with that investigation? Yes, I was. You were being completely honest to the best of your knowledge in assisting them with their inquiries? Yes, I was. And had you always been completely honest with Anti-Corruption Unit 12? <sighs> Please answer, Miss Denton. It was a complex case and there were many details that were elusive and at times required further thought and examination before I could give a definitive answer. Did you lie in relation to matters surrounding the conspiracy to murder Tommy Hunter? Miss Denton. As I said, it was a complex case and many details were difficult to define or recollect. Did you lie about having prior knowledge of Hunter? No. You lied about having prior knowledge of Hunter, didn't you? No. You told the investigators lie after lie to confound them and to pervert the course of justice, didn't you? It wasn't like that. It was like that. You wove a web of deceit to confound the investigators and to protect yourself and you've the effrontery to attempt to deceive this jury. No. Did you fabricate the improper relations between you and Detective Sergeant Arnott? No. Did you fabricate the planting of evidence against you? No. Lindsay Denton, aren't you an artful, devious person who has betrayed the trust placed in her as a police officer? No. And haven't you repeatedly and shamelessly connived to obstruct those who would bring you to justice? No, I haven't! Much of that service really turned my stomach. Listen, I owe you an apology for the other night, your uh, dinner invitation. You're a married man. This is it. But here we are, two colleagues having a drink, and the sky hasn't fallen in yet. Yeah. This is a voluntary interview by authorised firearms officer Victor Charlie 53 in the presence of a police federation representative and solicitor by Superintendent Hastings and the Asana. I want to cooperate. I want to go on record that I have never at any time engaged with any other officer in covert telecommunications to knowingly mislead lawful inquiries. Glad to hear it. I also want to clarify some details, previous statements made regarding the death of Sergeant Daniel Waldron. Very good. Carry on. I never saw the exact moment the struggle started. The struggle for the gun that killed Daniel Waldron. Neither did Rod. We 
get to rely on what Harry... ...on what Five Four told us. He said that Danny had entered the room with his firearm drawn and that he'd turned the gun on Five Four. So you're saying Danny tried to kill Five Four? I'm saying that's only what Five Four told us. He said that Danny turned the gun on him. Five Four made a grab for the firearm to stop Danny from shooting him. There was a struggle for the gun. Rod and I joined in that struggle. The gun went off and killed Danny. Oh, no, a second. Constable, this is going way beyond clarifying a statement. I mean, you are changing your story all over again here. This is the truth, sir. Well, you need to take a deep breath. And we need to caution you. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you fail to mention one question, something you'll later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be used in evidence. Do you understand? I understand. So, now you're saying that Danny wasn't trying to kill himself. He was trying to kill Victor Charlie 5-4, or so 5-4 claimed. Yes, sir. That seemed plausible. Why? Danny was bullying us into covering for him after he shot a suspect. He moved the suspect's firearm. And then he discharged the weapon narrowly missing 5-4. What, you conspired with Daniel Waldron to provide false statements regarding the shooting? Yes, sir. We were all really scared of Danny. There was a part of him that was capable of doing anything. So you killed him? No. It seemed like an accident. 5-4 convinced me and Rod that if we said that we'd killed Danny in self-defence, that the least we'd be looking at would be manslaughter. He told us to claim that we were trying to save Danny. And that way nobody could blame us for his death. Yes, but instead of telling the truth, the three of you went off and concocted a whole new version of events. And then you decided to blame Rod Kennedy for Danny's death. I knew Rod was jealous of Danny. It seemed plausible that he could have been the one. You don't believe that anymore? No, sir. Five four initiated the struggle with that gun. And it's only his word for it that it was self-defense. I just don't believe him anymore. I can't cover for five four any longer. He convinced me to blame Rod. But I'm not sure that Rod could have killed Danny. He wasn't that sort of man. I betrayed him. Constable, you have my sincere condolences for the death of your colleagues. However, we have a job to do, and that job requires us to investigate thoroughly and impartially the murder of one of our own. And whilst we appreciate your cooperation here today, you have knowingly misled this inquiry for weeks on matters of the utmost gravity. Firstly, in respect of the shooting dead of a suspect. Secondly, in respect of the loss of life of an officer in the line of duty, the withholding of crucial information, the blatant disregard from your lawful duty as a police officer to comply with a criminal investigation. And therefore, I am submitting to the police board that you be served with a red notice, which is the termination of your contract as a police officer. And moreover, I will report to the Crown Prosecutor regarding perverting the course of justice and assisting an offender. Now, you won't be charged at this time. However, pending my discussion with the Crown Prosecutor, you may be charged with these offences. But I thought if I cooperated that you'd go easier on me. A suspension. A yellow notice. A fellow officer has been killed. There is no more serious offence that we investigate. Now, you may think I'm harsh, Constable, but I know that this is justice. All rise.
Foreman of the jury, please stand. Have you reached a verdict upon which you're all agreed? No, we have not. In these circumstances, I am willing to accept a majority verdict upon which ten or more of you agree. Yes, my lady. All rise. from the second PM on PC Kennedy. Yeah. Boss, sorry, I thought this shouldn't wait. Yeah, come on. There's something I should know about, Gaffer. Yeah, why didn't you bring the whole bloody office with you? Look, I'm sorry, sir. The pathologist revised the findings on Rod Kennedy's post-mortem. What, you mean she's admitted that they screwed up in the first one? Well, the findings are subtle, but there's a superficial head injury. Bruising was hidden under scalp hair at the back of the head and minor defence wounds on the hands. Again, very subtle. Fortunately, no organic material recovered from under the fingernails. Well, none of this is very strong. No, but I went back over the forensics and the foreign fibres in Kennedy's clothing. Again, not strong. Similar fibres were found in Kennedy's nose and mouth at the 2nd p.m. Right. Best guess, someone smothered him, then hanged him while he was unconscious. Well... If Baines killed Danny, I'll lay you even to kill Kennedy as well. Monique just showed me this. Traffic camera vid caps from the night of Rod Kennedy's death. This camera is located less than half a mile from the industrial estate. This registration matches a vehicle registered to... Harinda Paul Baines. We've definitely gone over threshold for our friend PC, Harry Baines. Bring him in, Steve. Good call, Gaffer. Yes, sir. What happened with the postmortem? Were you supposed to organise it? Yeah, listen, mate, no, I sent the email, but I only just saw this morning it bounced back from the pathologist's office. Right. Steve, life's over. Beneath, get me an update on Harry Baines' whereabouts. Urgent. Telecoms. I'll get hold of Kate, see if she's on his tail. We need an urgent triangulation on a suspect's mobile phone. Telephone number 07591-152-689. Yeah? He's at or near home. Right, could have concealed firearms. Organise on backup. Telecom's triangulation places Harry Baines at his home address. We understand that his wife and one child reside at the same address. What? PC Francis is in Baines' squad. She shouldn't be in here. Correct. Thank you. Francis. Sir. I've been bumped off the op. Too close to Baines. I need to be in on this, Doc. Can you make a call? Yeah. This is too dangerous. I want you out of it. Oh, for Christ's sake, Doc. Sorry, Kate. Set aside that this is one of our own. Harry Baines is potentially armed and is considered to be extremely dangerous. Let's get this done. Kate, you were right about the PM. Rod Kennedy. He was murdered. Hello? You're being feared out for murdering Rod Kennedy. No, he was, he was fine when I left him. Do you hear how guilty you sound already? I don't, I don't know what to do. Right? Well, I do this for a living. If you want a way out, you listen to me.
Who's your DA? On his way. Then I'm the ranking officer. Well, we need Baines alive for information on the murder of Danny Waldron. Armed police, come out with your hands above your head. Over now! Where's Harry? I, I don't know. He went into the garage. Oh, can you open it? The keys are on the side. Get her out of here. Harry! It's McAndrew! We're opening the garage door. It's jammed. Wait. Clear. Only. Don't catch the phone. Oh, no. Well, I've got eyes on Harry Baines. He's just entered the industrial unit where Rod Kennedy's body was found. Look, he's probably armed. Don't move in, sir, till I'll bring back up. I'm not daft. I want to stay well out of it. Thanks, sir. On the way. Come here, come here. Secure that phone. I've got Ops on Baines. Follow me. Kate, I've got Ops on Baines. I'm en route to the industrial unit where Rob Kennedy was found. Yes, Stephen, on my way. Seriously? Of all the places to run, mate. Where are you going now? What are you doing here? I'm just minding my own business. Re-examining an old crime scene. You expecting someone else? Who? Don't know what you're on about, mate. Well, have it your own way. I was just trying to give you a chance before the circus arrives. A chance of what? Well, the way I see it, it's your word against Jackie Brickford's. Now, if you're seen to be cooperating with the inquiry, then... Don't take a genius to figure out who they'll believe, eh? Listen, bud, I don't trust you as far as I can throw you. It's where your mate Rod died. And we've just had the post-mortem report in. He was murdered. You see, that's what I'm doing here. You? Oh, it's not very clever, is it? Returning to the scene of the crime. I had nothing to do with that. I believe you, mate. I do. And frankly, between the two of us, the forensics aren't that strong. But will Hastings, hmm? Will the CPS? See, this is that chance I was talking about. Now, starting with Danny Waldron. Before he died, did he ever confide into you about those two pervs he killed? No, you never said over. You think carefully. Ronan Murphy and Linus Murphy were the blokes he killed. Did he ever mention any other names? Politicians, coppers? No. Think! Tommy Hunter and Lindsay Denson. What, what would Danny have to say about them? All right. So who are you here to meet? I don't know. I never met him. I don't know anything about him. Nothing? Oh, nothing. I'll beat you own way. Mate, look, you don't understand. What don't I understand? Well, I'm just small fry. Steady. It's just my phone. Look, it's unregistered. Right, they can't trace it. I'll call them for you now, yeah?
number you have called is not recognized. Please check the number. The number you have called is not recognized. Please check the number. The number you have called is... There is no bloke. It's all you. You killed Danny Waldron. You persuaded your mates to lie about it, and then when Rock Kennedy wanted to come clean, you killed him. No, none of that's true. I never killed Rod. you for the murder of Roderick Kennedy. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you fail to mention when question something you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be used in evidence. Hey. What the hell are you doing here, Francis? DC Fleming, Mum. AC-12. What happened? Let's take a look. When I got here, Baines jumped me. You know, he was going to string me up the same way he did Rock Kennedy. I shouldn't have gone in without backup, so I just didn't want him to get away, you know. Oh, no, no, nobody's going to question your judgment. You did a grand job, son. No. Take yourself off to the hospital and get yourself a checkup. Go on, off you go. Cheers, guy. Yeah. Uh, Inspector, uh, we're going to take this man into our custody, but I'd like you to give us one of your crews to ride shotgun. Yes, sir. Are you lucky AC-12 got to you first? My team, we're following the rest of you back to the station. Have you anything to say? Take him away. Steve. You OK, Doc? Yeah, I'll live. Free to come in if you want. Oh, wait here. Will the defendant please stand? Will the foreman of the jury please stand? An 18 month search of Harry Bain's home uncovered a cache of mobile phones, all of the unregistered pay you go variety. Finding these phones allowed us to examine their call history. Harry Baines received a call a night before going to inspect McAndrew and volunteering to stay on Danny's squad. And who was the call from? Well, unfortunately, it was also an unregistered pay-as-you-go phone and said phone's no longer in history. Same MO as the recent text Baines received telling him to sit tight. Three days later, there's another call from the same number. That was the night before Baines murdered Danny Waldron. You think they're connected? Well, if they are, sir, it means somebody's been pulling the strings. Someone who ordered Danny's murder. Well Welcome back, Dad. Thanks, Great work, sir. On the charge of conspiracy to murder, have you reached a verdict upon which at least ten of you agree? We have. What is your verdict? 
Not guilty. On the charge of perverting the course of justice, have you reached a verdict upon which at least ten of you agree? We have. What is your verdict? Guilty. Members of the jury, thank you for your time and efforts in this complex case. You are now dismissed. I'm putting you in for a commendation. Sir, I don't deserve that. You listen to this fella. Single-handedly brings in an AFO who killed two coppers in cold blood, and for all he knew, they could have been armed to the teeth. I'll give you don't deserve it. Lindsay Denton, for the offence of perverting the course of justice, I impose a sentence of 38 months imprisonment. Since you've already served the custodial term of that sentence, your immediate release on license will follow. You are now free to go. All right. On license. Lindsay! Lindsay! Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to make a brief statement on behalf of my client. My client would like to thank the men and women of the jury who were faced with a complex case but did not. 585 days. And on every single one, I thought about what I'd do when this moment finally came. I forgive you. Who's the real guilty party, Lindsay? I'd like to thank the jury. Do you believe you were set up? Do you think you were framed, Lindsay? I'd just like to get on with the rest of my life. Who's still missing? Do you justice, Lindsay? Who's the real guilty party, Lindsay? I'd just like to, to get on with my life.